Welcome to another episode of Pod for Good, a podcast where we learn from those doing good in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the world, why they care, what we can do, and most importantly, what you, the listeners, can do. Pod for Good is produced and edited by Ran Productions, which is me. So again, if you know me and you know the word podcast, remember, I don't just host one. I also make them for other people. For some reason, that is unclear to some. Uh, Pod for Good can be found anywhere you get your podcasts. And so please leave us a review and five stars. And if you're not going to leave us five stars, tell us why. Three star asshole. I, <laughs> I don't like not knowing what that person only kind of quasi likes about Pod for Good. It's probably uh, somebody who didn't like your voice, but did like my voice. So they only did a three star. Son of a bitch. I am, as always, your chief philanthropod and class clown for justice. This this bit's getting real old. Jesse Orch. <laughs> and I am your vice admiral philanthropod and class clown for justice. Let's just see how long we can keep it going. Lit. We did. We're experts. This episode, we are talking to former Rant 9 Productions intern Carter Combs, who is now, among other things, other than being a great musician, is also sort of the head honcho for Fur Fest, happening October 8th at the Fur Shop. We talked to Carter about Fur Fest. We also talk about why you shouldn't Google Fur Fest and why he is super excited about the Tulsa music scene and wants you to come see it. So enjoy our conversation about Fur Fest. We are very excited to have, most importantly to me, former intern of Random Productions, but current uh, CEO and president of all things for Fur Fest, Carter <laughs> Combs on the podcast. Carter, how you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. CEO of all things. Of all things, yeah. Yeah. That's a lawsuit waiting to happen yeah. right there. <laughs> Lord and savior, comma, fur fest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Chief, uh, chief furry, I think. Mm, is, the, he's, the the CFO. Yeah. he's the CFO. He's the CFO. CFO. Yeah. Nailed that's it. what we they're calling it. it in the underground right now. Yeah. yeah. It's chief. Chief, chief furry, furry. furry off. Chief yeah. fur officer. Chief, furry. chief, chief furrier. Chief I really furrier. am redefining my image as a, as a human being with this whole fur, fur yep. connotation of this name. Yep. yep. Okay, so let, let's get into this. So tell our listeners about FurFest. So FurFest is uh, a new music festival that's going to be happening on October 8th at the Fur Shop. That's why it's called FurFest. Oh. That's, the fun, that's the fun trick that we like to play on... The ear, you know, you hear Fur Fest, you think of something else, but it's actually a local music festival. So it's at the Fur Shop. Uh, it is on October 8th. It's going to be featuring, I think, 11 um, artists as of right now that could expand, but I don't want to make any huge promises just yet. But And so, how, you know, other than the people who come in furry costumes by accident, um <laughs> How are, how are these bands like what how is this different from uh, any other music festival that might be happening in town? Well, I mean there are a few little um intricacies of the thing that you could argue are a little different. I mean, I'll be honest, a large part of why I wanted to do it was because I've I frequent the first shop. It's a cool little spot. Um and they have three stages that are built into that place that um one of which is like a large outdoor um like festival type stage. And they don't really use it that often. And so that was something that I kind of just thought would be a uh, a good idea to capitalize on. And I'm lucky enough that the GM of the first shop has kind of given me, I mean, essentially she said, here's some money, go play, you know, and like make this thing happen. And so I've gotten to do a, ins do an insane amount of research on local music, whether it be OKC, Tulsa or the surrounding areas. And, um, it all kind of is coming from one place as far as the booking goes. And that's, that's, that's this guy. So, I mean, like all of the, all of the bands and all the artists that we're going to be featuring are all just like untapped, uh, 
untapped artists, untapped markets, so to speak, that like we could probably give some more attention that people might not know about. And it's really cool because, you know, I like to think that I've got a little bit of I, 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 I'm I'm very excited about the people that we're bringing into play. And so a lot of them are, like I said, not not too. They're somewhat of an untapped market of a band or, you know, someone that hasn't gotten uh, maybe their due diligence as far as like attention goes. And so we're bringing them in. Uh, and I think it's going to be a really fun time. I mean, it's uh, primarily a rock festival, but we're we're breaking the genre barrier just a little bit uh, just to see what happens. Yeah. And with the. Um center of the universe gone forever and hop jam who knows if that'll ever come back there is a little bit of a hole in in tulsa for for a rock music festival right yeah and like honestly one thing that you can call it ugly you can call it whatever you want i mean i I don't have too much of an opinion on this but like there is the common saying when it comes to music it's all about who you know and it's all i mean with probably multiple different uh little local industries, things like that. Uh, That's all about who you know. Well, with this, it really was a matter of let's listen to some music and let's see how much of a following they might have. And then let's see who's good. I mean, if we can, if we know they're good and we can tell like, oh, they don't, they're not getting a ton of attention. Let's bring them in. That's that. I guess that might be honestly, I didn't even think about this until we start talking about it. That might be ultimately the biggest difference is that this is less about who, we know and it's more about who we think would bring a good a good vibe to the atmosphere or whatever well because p- people are always talking about how Tulsa has a great music scene and it's like something i've always wanted to get more into but then i'm also like i don't know who to go see right <laughs> well the the thing that's also beautiful about tulsa is that there is an overabundance of bands i found out like in in choosing oh my gosh in choosing like the lineup for this thing I mean, it's not like we have the the budget to pay like a ton of like of the biggest acts in town. But because of that, that opens up a new realm of like, OK, well, what are some of these smaller acts that we can look at? Hundreds. I mean, hundreds. There there are bands in all all different genres, all subgenres of rock, country. Hip hop is huge. I mean, we, there's there is plenty, plenty to choose from. So. And I know, I know, and we can cut this out if I'm wrong about this, but you've been in conversations with um, Chris Davis from the Tulsa Creative Engine, correct? Yes, yeah, and that's it's one of those things where we'll see what happens. We we're kind of I'm, I'm I'm leaning away from announcing um, too many acts just yet because there is some there is some like uh, things that we still need to figure out. One thing that I know as someone that works in like a little bit of music business, but I also am in a band and I play with my friends and things like that. Uh, artists are unpredictable people. <laughs> so you might, they might show up, they might not, you know, I don't know. So we're, we're, we're holding off on announcing bands just yet. Um, I mean, I know I sent you guys that press release that says the R or tentative uh, set list, but um, that will be more concrete as time goes on, probably here in a week or two. It's true. Like artists w- have no training in like keeping a calendar and, you know, uh, no. organizational mm-hmm. things. They, they have talent in playing music. And so, right. Um, that happens. I don't know how I learned to do that. Listen, personally. like, uh, I'll tell you who's the worst at this and there's no fault of theirs, but like phys- people, people, physical artists, people who make paintings or um, like statues or um, any of those type of things, like trying to do an event around them is incredibly difficult just because they're not <laughs> thinking about that kind of stuff. And, you know, trying to get them to just answer an email is incredibly difficult because they're the, the non email types. And, you know, yeah. so I get it. So for our listeners, like they, they see things on, on Facebook or wherever that they're on, for this festival or that event or that thing, why should they go to this? Well, I mean, honestly, for one, the first shop alone is a pretty cool environment for something like this. Um, just facilities wise, like I said, that stage 
uh, outside and then the two that are inside because you've got the upstairs stage and then the downstairs stage. It's a pretty cool, intimate uh, setting for something like this, I think. And also, uh, pre-sale tickets are $11 and then general admission will be $16. And that's for an entire day of what I think is some of the coolest uh, bands and artists in Oklahoma right now. So will think, you be yeah. using all three stages during the festival? Yes. Multiple bands going at once? Yes. And that's that's a that's going to be a process as well. We've got uh, I mean, we've got some loud bands coming. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to figure out how that works. But I mean, it, as far as as far as I'm concerned, they've they've had multiple acts go on at once before and it's been just fine. So but yeah, pri- primarily right now, um, the way it's looking is the the inside or the indoor uh, downstairs stage and then the outdoor stage are going to be the, the biggest, mm-hmm. the biggest ones. Definitely put the loudest bands outside. So they're blaring right at those incredibly yeah. expensive condo townhouse things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Just I'm still angry. People want to live like that expensive things were put right there. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, you get what you deserve. Uh, Don't even get me started on downtown apartments, dude. That's yeah. that's a uh, that's why none of us live there anymore. Music, music, and downtown apartment holders just don't just <laughs> doesn't nope. doesn't work out completely yeah. well. Not great podcasting spaces either. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so one question that I know Jesse will have as well is: Is the first shop going to do any themed cocktails? Yes, with the concert. Oh man write it down i i gotta write that down right yeah. now will we at our level of sponsorship get a get a, some get ad- some free well no not free i mean i mean free would be nice but like a themed cocktail f- uh, like as a sponsor like a pod for good cocktail shot cocktail for good for, yeah shot, shot for, for good, good. Mm, yeah shot for good listen you, you make that happen i'm gonna write it down right now <laughs> i demand that'd it. be that'd be y'all's main benefit yeah yeah uh, listen i will Love order it. 20 of those so <laughs> i actually did have a shot named after me over there sadly enough at, at some point in time in the past nice nice but uh, could, could, i assumed say, all they yeah. did were uh the um uh five dollar beer and a shot do they still do the five dollar beer and a shot they do Oh, man. Uh, at least last Probably, as, yeah. last time I was there for one of the best birthday parties I've ever been to, uh, uh, where there was also karaoke, where the uh, one of the bartenders had an amazing singing voice. Um, but I was just like, Chris, have you ever been in the upstairs part? I don't think I have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I've been um, one year. I think it was maybe Blue Well Comedy had some some shows in their upstairs that I went to. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It, it definitely. I mean, it, the way it is designed up there, it looks like a comedy club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, it's a, it's a great space up there. And I mean, it's, it's a, it's a great little, it's like a dive bar, but like a dive bar that has way more room and stuff than you'd expect from a dive bar, yeah, but still yeah, right. keeps the aesthetic, which I like. Right. Yeah. It has the aesthetic of a dive bar, but I don't think it's run like a dive bar. They they, they, they care what's I mean, happening inside. Right. It's been around for a while yeah. from what I understand too. I mean, mm-hmm. you can kind of tell with, you know, I mean, it just, yeah, it looks like it's been around for a while. The sign alone outside, <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, this has been around for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And when people are hungry, they can just go across the parking lot to that. Oh, mm-hmm. Is that thing closed now? The, the Chinese food slash taco. Well, place? ghost, ghost dragon isn't, it is closed. Yes. But they, they still have the, um, the sandwich place. All right. Uh-huh. All right, Pico. But that right. closes at like 4 p.m., so it's ah, kind of useless. All right, never mind. I'm taking all They'll that. They'll have out. a every so often they got Tacos Don outside. That's nice. Tacos Don Francisco. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Nice. Will there be yeah. food trucks at this event? Oh yeah. All right. Oh That's yeah. Good. Of That's course. Good. Just get in line. We gotta feed. Yeah. We gotta feed people while yep. they're just get in line early for those food trucks. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Oklahoma food trucks, get your shit together. Make things faster. <laughs> Yes, so seriously. Jesse, you say that. So I guess is Boston really fat? Because I've been to food trucks in other states, and I feel like they're just generally all slow unless they're doing like a really easy thing. Um, and m- maybe it's just the food trucks I went to all were making easy things, but I also feel like there were also like more employees in the truck. Like the truck is, was bigger, um, and so there were like three gotcha. to four employees in there instead of like two. Um, gotcha. Okay. So, and I feel like you and I have waited in especially long lines for food trucks from time hey. to time. 
I don't know which one you guys are talking about, but I will say that hot dog one downtown does a great job whenever it's right by Reds. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Doghouse? Right is it Doghouse? Is that I'm what it's called? I'm not even sure. But I'll tell you what, they're slinging dogs. Like, they're, uh, they, it's quick. Again, the, the comments. Seattle, I really like the Seattle dog. It's got like cream cheese, like uh, onions and mustard or something. I never would have thought of cream cheese on a hot dog, but it is really good. Not gonna lie, I think I had that literally just just a week. <laughs> you see, yeah, <laughs> hot dog, hot dog, great food truck food. This, like it really you is. Can make, you it's can much make a faster, lot of them very quickly. Can, yeah, exactly. Listen, Happy. Those like homemade empanadas we had were delicious. I don't know if they needed forty five minutes to be made. Uh, <laughs> whichever food see, truck. See, a hot dog food truck. It's not as though they can make it much better than just a hot dog. You make. It's not like it's not any much worse or much better yeah. than a normal hot dog. Yeah. No. So like, it's just what's weird is wh- while I was in Boston, there was a competition for like the best gourmet grilled cheese food truck. There were like seven of them, and so there was just grilled cheese food trucks everywhere, and it was a delight for me. Um, <laughs> so I learned lots of things like the, you have to use mayonnaise instead of butter for the bread because mayonnaise has a higher, uh, melting point just for the grilling part, not for like on it, but the, the butter would melt. So, cause it's hot in those food trucks. Um, mm-hmm, yeah, anyway, that's, that's our tangent about food trucks. Um, <laughs> so can you, I know you don't want to, uh, necessarily announce the lineup yet. Can you, can you throw out maybe in your research, what was kind of a, a cool band that doesn't seem like it gets the recognition that it deserves. If there was anything that kind of struck your fancy when you were researching. Well, one band is actually, it's a group of friends that I went to college with and they're called Hannah, Hannah Rennell and the postman. And they're from Tahlequah. They are like one of the best bands in that I've seen live. Um, It, you know, it's interesting how this, this kind of, uh, the way that we find out about local music is such a like it's such a multi-staged process and it's not like I don't know like they whenever more people see them more people will find out about them because of how good they are they're one of those bands that if you're in the room if you're in the same room as them you are like in awe about like how great their chemistry is. They're basically kind of like a, I, I would, I would say they lean toward, it's like rock music, but they do a little bit of funk and yeah. uh, poppy sound mm-hmm. too. It's fun. So like there are, that that's like one example is Hannah and the postman. Um, and yeah, there are just bands that, uh, they're all, honestly, there were all sorts of bands that I ended up discovering in the last year through all that, through all that listening that I was pretty, pretty shocked and excited about because it just made me it made me honestly it made me think okay this whole thing about the Tulsa music scene and the OKC music scene all this stuff it's not just we're not just blowing smoke up up you know you know what this there is there is an uh, existence of like good local music here mm-hmm. um, and you know well why do you think yeah. that is like I, I like historically, I know why Tulsa like had a music scene at certain points, but like, like right now, why? What is it about Tulsa and Oklahoma City? Well, I think it's two two things come to mind, and they're both essentially polar opposites of each other. One is that some artists, like I said, unpredictable. They don't think in terms of business marketing let's sell this as a product let's put something together for a stage that is for an audience let's do things that people are going to like uh there's there's a struggle with a lot of artists i i do it myself with breaking why you do music on a spiritual level and then why you do it as a performer you know things like that um, why you do it as like if you're trying to sell it as a product. That's one thing is it's hard for people to do the business end whenever they are artistically whatever driven people. But then you have the complete opposite. And that is people that over market themselves when they do not have a product to put on stage in the first place. I know I sound kind of like a businessman when it comes to this, but like <laughs> there is kind of two worlds to be recognized. And that is to love what you do and things like that. And like spiritually have the connection with the music that you're creating. But then there's also 
stepping outside of that a little bit and saying, okay, well, if we're going to uh, pursue music, if we're going to perform it, um, it's not going to be uh, as great unless the audience can get down with it. And basically what I'm saying is like one end is there are musicians and artists that over market themselves and they don't really work on what's going to be on stage. And then there are musicians that do the exact opposite and they under market themselves. That's one way you could dichotomize it. There are probably all sorts of other factors that come into play, but I mean, you've got to make sure no matter what, if you're a musician, if you're wanting to succeed in any, anywhere, like in your small town, in your neighborhood, in the state, in the country, people have to like it. That's the whole, that's that people have to follow you. And that's a pretty difficult thing to, to generate. I mean, it goes beyond, it goes be, I don't know. That's just, that's a hard thing to make happen as a, as an artist or a musician. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, Chris, but like, I don't, it's harder for me to discover music now than it was mostly I'm just listening to less music, but also I'm like, mm-hmm. I find new things because either like an algorithm recommends it to me because I'm listening to something else that's kind of like it or somebody plays it for me or like I hear it on a TV show and I'm like, Oh, that song sounds interesting. Yeah. Or I found that, um, during COVID when, when the only like things you could do is occasionally there'd be like socially distant outdoor kind of events or concerts. And that was how I discovered a few, um, local artists that I hadn't heard. Um, one that still sticks with me is, is a uh, nightingale that was just an there. They were an awesome, awesome band. Um, they're killer. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a lot. Of, I mean, they put on a great performance and they're one of those bands that can do it with like three people and they can balloon out to a huge group. But that was one that was, you know, a lot of fun that I'm trying to think there was another one. Um, I often pronounce her name wrong. It's either Cassie or Casey Stevens. But, but there, I mean, that was the thing. I, I, I tend to like you, Jesse, I tend to stumble on them. If I happen to be at an event, a festival or something, you know, there happens to be live music at a beer festival we went to, or, you know, I go to Kendall Whittier to, um, you know, their, their farmer's market. And sometimes they'll have live music. It's just, it really is just what you happen to stumble because we don't go out every weekend and go to the, all the, you know, bars that have live music. Cause there's live music basically every night in Tulsa. If you want to find it, we just don't really go out and do that anymore. And it's exhausting to do that. <laughs> it is exhausting to go and, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love, I love what I do. I love making music and I love seeing people's reaction whenever it is good. But that, that exhausts a large chunk of my desire to go and see um, other bands on a consistent basis. There are some though. I mean, there are, yeah, like Nightingale's great. Um, Dane and the Soup is another band that if I hear about them playing in town, I'm, you know, I I heavily consider going. Um, There are, Honestly, there are tons of, well, not tons, but there, there are like a few bands specifically that if I hear their name, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm automatically thinking of going. Yeah. But yeah, but like what you were saying too, is the, the thing of like stumbling upon music that as a, as a performer, I have to consciously always be thinking I'm playing for the people that came to see me that are my friends most likely. And then um, passers by or whatever people, people just showing up. And I, uh, that, that has helped me a lot because whenever you prepare yourself for performing for strangers, strangers just so happen to like you. Mm-hmm. And when you're on stage, you, you want people to, to like you. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so I, I do also have to call out one of my favorite, um, local artists just because, He's basically been, as far as I know, been doing it for like 20 plus years. And that's Steve Liddell, who now I know he he doesn't do as much live performing. I know he he uh, does does uh, booking at some some of the concert venues here. But Steve Liddell is one that I remember. Jesse, I don't know if you remember this when uh, when East Village Pizza used to be a little club called 818 that mm-hmm. had 
a little stage in the back and he would play there all the time and we would go and see him. So it's always, I do, one of the things I do enjoy is watching the journey of some local artists, especially, you know, it's always awesome when they can go and sort of graduate to a bigger stage somewhere else, but also to see the ones that stay here and grow and experiment with music and do cool stuff is also fun to see. Sure. So speaking of musicians playing and doing their own thing, how, like following you on Facebook, like I've seen you performing a lot. Like how is that going on separate from, you know, being the CFO of Furfest? Um, <laughs> <clears throat> like how, how is your, how is your, how, yeah. How is your like it. musician career going? It's going good, man. I, I, I love it. I mean, uh, I love it. I do this only at this point. Like right now I, I, just do booking and then event planning for like things like this and, uh, performing music and creating music with my friends. It's, uh, it's pretty great. Um, I, I'm, I mean, I'm fortunate that I get to be able to do this, things like this. Um, performing is fun because, whenever you do a good job and other people recognize it, that means there is a connection being uh, established between the two of you. That's kind of unlike any other connection because you pull out a song that they like, or you just do a song that they just so happen to like, or, you know, and it's new to them. Um, it's, it's, it's fun getting to do that. And I will say like, sometimes I, you know, I, I tend to meet certain certain musicians and artists that I can't tell if they're enjoying what they're doing. And that's something that I wish was talked about a little bit more, but it's not uh, in the community of musicians. But like for me, I love being on stage. I love making a crowd feel good and I love getting loud. And then if, if we get quiet and everyone's following us, it feels good because they followed us all the way down to the, the, the quietest moment. Um, that's that's a lot of fun and recording is a whole nother process that i love too um that's you know it's it's all it's all a really good time i I like i like music because i kind of get to um spread my my wings as far as multiple different interests that i have because i like doing meticulous work too it's not all the time you know I mean, like you said earlier, I, I interned for you. I used to edit the podcasts and I still do things like that. Like every so often, just little, little music, music related things that I have to be very, very like focused in on and things like that. Um, but with that being said, music also has very unpredictable moments. It has uh, business related decisions that you have to make. And there's a whole marketing aspect to it. There's this, it really is an entire beast that occupies a lot of time. And I'm lucky enough to get to uh, be able to do that all the time. So I, yeah, I definitely love doing what I'm doing. Will you be performing at Furfest? Oh yeah. Excellent. <laughs> oh yeah. That's right. Don't get it twisted. That's right. This is a, hey, hey, there's a reason behind this, yeah. right? Hey. No, hey. <laughs> it's like how if, if Jesse ever starts some sort of like a, a podcasting convention in Tulsa, you know that that he's going to yeah, be I would be the keynote speaker. Capacities. So, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Hell yeah. No, whenever we started doing this, in the back of my mind, I was like, there's no way we're not going to play at this thing. Like, we have to. This is this is not. It, it's, it's worth the work if we get to play as well. So That's we're right. playing. That's awesome. Yeah. So we can't say that Studio House Project, they will be on the stage at, at Furfest. Excellent. There you go. You heard it here, possibly That's second. Right. Um, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Maybe first for some people. Uh, That's right. Yeah. We'll see. We'll find out. So for, um, what, what's been the hardest part of trying to put together a, a uh, music festival? Paying artists. That's <laughs> that's easily. And it, it's it's hard to because, you know. Uh, there the the classic story with musicians and the and the musicians community is not getting paid enough. Mm -hmm. So like, whenever you're in a position like I am, I'm a musician, and I'm also a booking person. So I do my best to really 
meet in the middle on some of those things. And with this, this, this event is small enough to where we're, we're getting everyone paid what they want um, and what they've requested. And it's great. I mean, it's going to work out that way. Um, But you do kind of, you know, you hear, you hear horror stories about uh, festivals not paying their artists anything and, you know, take whatever, take whatever side or whatever opinion you want on it. It does kind of just suck, but it's not, I don't know. It's not a blame one person kind of deal in my mind, but um, that that's been the biggest thing. So we've been doing sponsorships, like telling organizations like, or businesses, if you give us this amount of money, we'll give you these little benefits that come with it. And ultimately you'll just be paying for a group to come and perform uh, that we've been wanting to book. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to make that happen because, you know, there are bands that have had a presence in Tulsa for a while and they're a little expensive. So (laughs) yeah, (laughs) we gotta, we gotta, you know, ask those questions and, make stuff like that happen. That's that, that can be difficult, but you know, it's all worth it. Mm-hmm. So does that mean that yeah. uh, a sponsor can, can be like um, a particular band presented by so-and-so? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I actually did think about that because there was a period of time there where we were like, we, we, we want people to sponsor uh, bands that we've, we have on our list of, of uh, consideration. Mm-hmm. And I did, I did think I was like, so, so what does that mean? Does that mean that there's going to be some sort of banner that says, you know, one Oak presents, you know, I'm sure they're not, I love they're it. not even involved, but uh, Listen, I think no slander yeah. on one oak. I don't know why I just threw them out. That's there. fine. They know what they it's did. Fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like if if you we prefer listen, one gas on this podcast, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> one right. gas yeah. podcast. Yeah. Um, there's a friend of mine who'd be very upset about me just saying that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, so like, again, like Pot for Good's hoping to be a sponsor. I mean, we're going to be a sponsor. It's just how much I can afford at the time. Um, that's okay. But like, if we can be the, the, the sponsor for your band, like I'm a hundred percent behind that. That'd be hilarious. Um, <laughs> I'm in, Yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'll just tell everyone in the band we're getting sponsored yeah, by you guys. Yeah. I'm not even going to ask. And, like, <laughs> and I want, I want a shot. I want a pot for good shot, shot for good. Uh, Y'all got any t-shirts that we could wear when we play? Um, Cause we might just, just, he's working on some, I'm working on, he's working on that. Cause we're going to have our uh, anniversary yeah. show here in under a month. I got to get shirts. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared because it's going to cost a lot of money that I don't have. But get uh, on it. I know. Like, who's making your shirts for Fur Fest? <laughs> oh God, uh, Mythic Printing. Okay, who's your contact there? Sh- shouts out Mythic Printing. I don't know. I'll give you. I'll, I'll send right. you the email. I've been wanting to reach out to them. So they do shoot you the email. Yeah, I want. They're cool. I yeah. want that. So I want, uh, listen, I'm not cheaping out on these pot for good shirts. I can tell you that. He's got the tri They were very. They they're very supportive. So, um, no, we'll have shirts. You can shoot them out of a, a cannon. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Do you have a, a shirt cannon, Jesse? Do, do, do we need it? Listen, I'll put it on the business credit card. So <laughs> I swear to God, if you get a shirt cannon, you get me some shirts. I will, I will 100% fire off. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I did once for a job, look up how much shirt, like shirt guns cost. <laughs> they are ridiculously expensive. Um, oh, really? but I think you can rent them. So I okay. will find out about renting one. So because that'd be great. They're powerful. They are powerful. Um, Just ask the internet, Jesse. Maybe somebody you know has one. You know a lot of people. I do know a lot of people. There you go. Um, and and some of some of those people will get the wristbands that we will get as sponsors to come to this event. Yeah, that's so right. That's, that's very exciting. All right. So again, sell our sell our listeners on why they should come to Furfest. Well. No matter what, you will be supporting something that I think is coming from a good place. Uh, this is like the beta version of uh, the Fur Fest. Uh, but at the same time, with the work that's been put in and uh, um, the artists that we have coming this year, I think it's going to be worth it for anyone to come out for $15 for, uh, or sorry, $16 for a day's worth of uh, good rock and roll music in coming from Tulsa and OKC. Every band has been listened to and studied and it all, it all makes sense that they uh, are on the same stage and sharing the same space because they're all really good at what they do. And I mean, 
if you are a music lover, I think you will uh, see the same thing that I do. Well, I, I plus there's yeah. a good chance that you'll see Jesse and I there. Oh yeah. If if Jess yeah if Jesse and Chris are there you'll and we'll, and the and the t shirt gun. Yep. <laughs> it's gonna get violent. Pod for shots or sh- shot for goods for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> shots for good shots um, for good shots for good the better name um and you need to make sure that nobody gets mod flanders did, 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 didn't you get mod, killed by a t-shirt gun on the simpsons <laughs> oh, maybe gosh, i don't know pretty sure homer moved out Pull of the way up. and she I'm got hit sure. by a well by that's a her own fault gun. then so <laughs> um so you to help you, Carter, we're gonna we're gonna end our conversation now so that it's not an incredibly long episode that no one listens to. We're gonna keep this in the time zone, the time range that people actually that is, actually would like. Um, hey, so that people that actually listen to okay. it. Um, so how can people? Yes, where do they go? Get now? updates, learn more about the festival, and keep up to date. Buy tickets when they're available. All that stuff. So you can. Um, learn more about it at just the first shops Facebook page, but we'll also be putting up uh, pre-sale tickets on a website called fan sub fan live. And we'll send out the link for that as time gets closer. Uh, I'm sure you guys can attach the link to it yes. or something like that. Whenever this releases, we but uh, yeah, we, we can tell you do not Google for a fest because you will be sent to, and I quote, uh, Oh yeah. The, uh, Midwest Fur Fest. Say it. Uh, Midwest Fur Fest yeah, right. is a furry convention that takes place in Rosemont, Illinois, usually the second weekend after Thanksgiving. So, which again, no, we, nothing against furries, but this is not that. I mean, it could be. Sure. Hey, we're not. No. Yeah. We're not being hateful. No. Yeah. yeah. But it is furries, hilarious. Furries are welcome to Fur Fest. Yes. As long as they buy yes. their tickets and want to yes. enjoy music. Yeah. That's right. Listen, they're going to be yeah. they're going to be let down when they arrive. <laughs> and they see that it's just normal if, people if furry in t-shirts shows up, and jeans. Yeah, I will buy them each a shot. So <laughs> okay. for each furry that shots for good. Yeah, that's right. You'll get a shot for good. They deserve it because you know those things. Those <laughs> costumes get hot, so yeah. they need to stay hydrated. I can't imagine. Uh, I actually looked it up on Google the other day. It was the first time I did that, and I had I had someone tell me they're like, "You dude, you need to Google fur fest." <laughs> I was like, all right, I know it's going to pop up. Yeah. But listen, I was, I was, yeah. I'm just happy. It was like a, I would say like a regular furry convention. So we'll, we'll, our listeners, I mean, it had a, well, it had like when you search something on Google and then like the, it, it had the thing pop up on the right end of the screen, which whenever you Google something and something pops yeah. up on the right, it looks a little bit more like established. So yeah, it did. It, it looks, it's, it's it's mm-hmm. they're keeping it PG, I think. Yeah. For the most part. Oh yeah. I have no idea what I'm talking that's about. Right. By the way, I don't know if that's true. Listen, you're on a podcast. That's how we roll. So I don't know if you can see this, oh. but here's Homer. <laughs> the t-shirts. Oh my Homer God. ducks, and Maud gets hit by a bunch of t-shirts, knocked off a grandstand, and dies. Here, uh, pull, pull your ca- pull your phone back a little bit. I'm wa- I want to add a marker so that we can share this as a screenshot. Oh. All right, hold, a little bit closer. There we go. All right. Excellent. So we'll share that. So yes, as long as there's no like open windows or um, if it's outside, yeah. nobody's standing up on really high stands, it should be fine. Yeah. You got to get a license to shoot something like that. <laughs> Not in Oklahoma, you don't. <laughs> so uh, uh, We <laughs> yeah. almost went the whole time without it, without it getting political. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, that the, was political. Yeah. That, that, hey, too so political. The, right the, there. These are all political. Christian rock bands, right? No, I'm just uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, well, we got Skillet. Yeah. <laughs> we got Newsboys. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, what's what's Flippo's favorite band that we make fun of him for? Um, MXPX. Yeah, here we go. Uh, we got Hillsong. <laughs> Hillsong, I know. Um, yeah. Well, uh, Carter, this was great catching up with you. I'm glad. I'm glad you're doing what you love. And um, that's right. Thank you. Not working at a job you hate, as was once true. Not working for me. I'm not talking. About uh, I was going to say. Sure. Yeah, I, was, I hope you were referring to yours. Like, you guys. Wow. No, 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 no. Di- no, I appreciate you guys letting me come on, and of course, I appreciate you guys letting me edit the pod whenever I was doing it. That was a uh, that was a good old time. Listen, yeah, I learned yeah. a lot. Jesse was happier then. Yeah, I was happier then. And in turn, who wasn't <laughs> getting paid by me, but was getting paid, it was perfect. I it was pretty great. I dream of yeah. that every day. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> well, uh, Car, thank you. We, the days. we look forward to uh, supporting the Fur Fest and yeah. obviously seeing you there and, um, you know, um, hopefully with a t shirt cannon or t shirt gun. Hopefully. Um, t shirt cannon. You won't get really... in unless you have one. All right. Uh, listen. listen, Jesse, I, there, you can, you can do it. There are, there are slingshots that are big enough to do it. They're not as mm. quite as exciting, but maybe less dangerous too. So something to think mm-hmm. about. All right. T shirt uh, slingshots. I'll look into it. I'm in. <laughs> All right. I'm in. Well, uh, well, it's, I'm, I'm trying to decide whether we just fade out with that or always end on a strong again. joke. <laughs> All right. Yeah. $330. Screw you, eBay. I'm not paying that for t shirt launcher. <laughs> if you're like me, you might hear estate planning and go, ugh, gross. You might think to yourself, I'm not sure why I'd bother with that. Estate planning is only for the uber rich. Tall grass begs to differ. Tall grass founding attorneys Laurel and Riley think everyone should have an estate plan. They know estate planning seems untouchable to a lot of folks, like something you have to do inside a stuffy law firm of Stuffy McLawyer Pants Esquire. But I promise you, Tallgrass is nothing like that. For one, they work out of their home so their clients can feel at home. They obsess, because they're nerds, over making clients feel like they belong and are supposed to be there. Also, their kids might make an appearance. They will take time to answer all of your questions, even the uncomfortable ones. They will work relentlessly to make sure your plan is exactly what you need to feel secure and at peace. So if you've been putting off planning for what's going to happen after you've gone, it's time for you to give Tallgrass a call at 918-770-8940 and start your plan today. Or visit their website at tallgrassestateplanning.com and schedule a free initial consultation. For free! It's right there on the website. And of course, there's more, because this is a podcast ad. If you tell them you're a Pod for Good listener, they're going to take 25% off their service fees. Just tell them Pod for Good sent you. Stop thinking estate planning isn't for you and give Tallgrass a call today at 918-770-8940 or on their website, which I'm not going to read out to you again. It's in our show notes. Thank you, Tallgrass. Thank you all for listening to our episode with Carter. You can grab tickets for for Fest, as we like to call it here, at fansub.live backslash e backslash furfest. We'll put that in the show notes so you don't have to get a pen out. <laughs> and that's the that's the short link for where it actually takes you, which I'm not gonna spell out because it is long. But go buy your tickets, go. Pop for Good is very excited to be a sponsor, even though Chris and I sadly will not be able to be there. But live music is awesome. The, uh, the first shop is awesome. Go enjoy it. And please go subscribe to Pod for Good anywhere you get your podcast. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. Leave us a review if you can. And as always, Tulsa, get it done. And Broken Arrow, get your shit together. Soon becoming to a t-shirt. <laughs>